In the latest episode of My Adventures with Superman, something major shakes the cannon. I will spoil, so you've been warned. Lois Lane puts together that Clark Kent is Superman. Finally, right? Now, this seems to address the major qualm that Superman fans have noticed through previous iterations. Lois Lane is smart. How could she never figure out that Clark Kent was Superman? I mean, he literally just puts on glasses and boom, the sky's 100. But it actually makes a lot of sense. Previous iterations of Lois Lane never realized it because she never really saw Clark Kent as someone who could be Superman. <laughs> Feels bad, I know. Clark Kent was just another mouse in the bustling city. He was also competition. Superman, though. Superman was her shining star and ticket to fame. But in this new series, since Lois Lane actually falls for Clark Kent first and puts Superman as secondary, she actually sees Clark Kent. Win for my boy. Woo! Thus, it's fairly logical that she would put it together much faster than her previous incarnations. Now, it's hearing about this change that inspired me to watch the series and make this video. Overall, I like the series, but two major problems arose for me. So let's get to it. The first problem is that I think this was a missed opportunity to redefine fights and pain for Superman. Now you've probably heard this regurgitated over and over, that it's actually really really hard to write Superman. Many people see him as boring since he's nigh invincible and only has one specific weakness, Kryptonite. Of course, Kryptonite has variations and he's also weak to magic, but you know, the nerd is in the details. It's also not uncommon to hear Superman fans retort that you should read All-Star Superman, and they're absolutely right. You really should. Or even just watch the animation if you can't read. DC honestly has some of the best animated films. Just, um, be a little bit wary of All-Star Batman. <laughs> Let's just say that he's a little bit notorious. <laughs> Anyways, here's my hot take. Writing Superman isn't inherently harder than writing any other superhero. Basically every superhero, hero, has the same writing issue as Superman. Think about it. Of course, other superheroes can't boast that they're invincible. They get injured, they bleed, they feel pain, etc. But that's all superficial. It allows more interesting expressions of art, but let's be honest here. Every superhero is essentially invincible. Like, no matter how the author puppets and strings the tension or your emotions, you know the hero will survive, be resurrected, or be rebooted. The thing is, great stories are ones where the author can best make you forget that the hero is supposed to win. The difference with Superman is that you just don't get to see him bleed as often, which, I mean, I don't know, that's just like a preference thing. <laughs> Thus, the real solution to writing Superman is just to make him feel immense pain that he has to get used to. He may not physically get injured, but mentally the pain takes a toll. When he gets punched or stabbed, make it so that he has the urge to run away or curl up in a ball and cry since it just hurts so much. Make it so that he can pass out from the sheer pain he feels. Make it so that he remembers vividly the pain that he's had from past encounters and fights. Also, just make it so that Superman is extremely rusty, clumsy, imprecise, and slow. Make it like Garfield's Spider-Man and Gwen Stacy. Oops. That's why My Adventures with Superman is great, because it does adopt these principles to a certain degree. But I think Superman could feel just a little bit more physical slash mental pain. I want to see him really cry. <laughs> I'm not Lex, I promise. So, the problem, Superman should feel more pain. The solution, make Superman feel more pain. Now, let's get to the second problem. I'm not going to tell you the second problem yet, but for now I can say that it can be concretely represented by the relationship between Clark and Lois. And to be honest, it probably isn't actually a problem in the first place. Now this is the thing, in the standard incarnation, Lois loves Superman, and Clark can't seem to catch Lois' eye. Clark literally self-sabotages and blocks himself, so if you ever fumble the bag, I mean, <laughs> just remember that. He had a pretty common and relatable problem of unrequited love, aka... However, in the new series, the writers decided to get Clark and Lois together fairly quickly, which, in my opinion, is actually a pretty smart trade-off. But what made Clark endearing previously was how he'd get ignored by Lois. He had the build of Adonis, but he was still meek and shy. However, that's already been said and done, and the current popular opinion is to hate media that meaninglessly drag on the will they or won't they game. Looking at you, bro. Everyone already knows that Clark and Lois will get together. 
Unlike other dramas or shows, there isn't really any other option or love interest so far. So by trading an original attribute of Superman, the show opens up a new realm of conflicts and interactions while also pleasing the audience by giving them an actual feel-good romance. Now, spoiler prediction. So you've been warned again. I predict that the writers will pull an L, where <laughs> Lois is like 99% sure Clark is Superman, but she has to gather hard evidence and all that bull before she confirms that Clark is Superman. Why L? Why? <laughs> I also predict that there might be slight conflict between Clark and Lois due to him withholding his secret identity. Then a call back to episode one about lying, then a makeup sesh, and then finally them flying into the sunset sky. I know you lied to me, Clark, but I still love you. <laughs> but back to my point, the thing is, the writers are just extremely good at marketing and capturing their demographic. Like, think about it, is it really a coincidence that Lois Lane looks like Luz from The Owl House or that she's an energetic tomboy? Remember Nagatoro or the revitalization of rambunctious female characters in anime that bully and bring shy passive males out of their shells? Also, is it just me or does Clark Kent's mom, Martha, look like Deku's mom from MHA? Man, I'm used to companies and old people not knowing what I want. The writers are smart. They understand the marketing concept of take something people have seen before and just tweak it. The mere exposure effect in effect. They also know that they've only got 10 episodes to make a point and reel in an audience to secure new seasons. So they're taking the greedy route and not playing the long game. This also explains the fast romance between Clark and Lois. Case in point, the writers are geniuses and you and I are being played episode by episode. Well, I guess willingly played <laughs> episode by episode. Now all of this context now allows me to put the problem into actual terms. It just sometimes feels like the show is too perfectly manufactured. My gut tells me that the show is too simple and just another piece of standard wish fulfillment. I mean, to ground my claim, the relationship between Clark and Lois feels a little bit too, um, I guess, fantastical? I don't know, that's not the right word for it, but I mean, like, look here, like, <laughs> first you have, like, Lois Lane, like, swooning over Clark Kent's hot bod, and after that, <laughs> they talk about daddy issues. I mean, like, someone's wish journal is being reenacted play by play here. But at the same time, this isn't, like, a bad thing. This is also not exclusive to Superman, and actually talking about your issues to other people is actually a pretty good thing to do. I mean, as a general concept. This current Superman series is more of a, a vessel for thought, but I could have picked other series. I thought about it more. Is it really bad that it's simple and wish fulfillment? I mean, what else could it be? Like, isn't that the point of comics and superheroes? Just due to the fact that this is a Superman property, and thus will attract a younger audience, the showrunners need to market and cater to a younger demographic in order to optimize their profits, so there's only so much room the writers can actually play with. So now, even though I say that the show being wish fulfillment is sort of a weird problem for me, maybe it's not the show that's the problem, but maybe it's me. I know that line is overused, but that actually leads me to my major point. The issue is that I used to cringe at wish fulfillment and simple characters because of how shallow they were compared to reality. I didn't like wish fulfillment or simple characters because I expected deviation. I expected depth. I expected sadness, complexity, anger to paint a character and make it good. I want my characters to break down in the shower while groveling and shoveling pizza and ice cream down. I want my heroes to lose and to be powerless. I figure it's because my generation, with easy access to mass consumption and media, allowed me to observe so many stories and tragedies that it's to the point where I can't accept the simple anymore. There's also the relatability of imperfection, but back to the point, previous me didn't want Superman to be this perfect lovable hero or a trope. I wanted him to have depth, complexity, problems, yada yada. But also because of the mass consumption of media, I've become much more aware of how popular and stereotypical it is to cringe at simple things. You'll find people sucking the joy out of media by pointing out how simple and stereotypical it is. Like, think about the vibe of, I am 14 and this is deep. There are so many people out there who need to differentiate themselves, call themselves deep, and scoff at the mainstream, wish fulfillment, etc. I mean, in including me. Maybe that's why the new Superman series is so nice. It's a little more simple and endearing, which makes it stand out in a sea of dreary.
I mean, it's not like the neckbeards, or sorry, I mean, the haters are wrong either. Some simple mainstream and popular shows do need to be called out for lazy or bad writing, but it's the being too jaded that's the problem. I know it's a problem for me when I feel like even the stuff I'm saying right now is just a rehash, but that's why what matters is balance. Being able to understand how tropey something is, but also being able to still enjoy it for yourself. I mean, let's be honest here. There's nothing new under the sun, but there is value that you are experiencing it under the sun for the first time yourself. So I propose a new solution. Let's just hate everything. Simple, hate it. Complex, hate it. People who like mainstream and simple things, hate them. People who hate simple things and mainstream things, say it with me. Hate them. Hate everything. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> okay, never mind. Let's flip that around. Maybe let's just find appreciation and value where it lies. Find understanding and appreciation towards those who enjoy the mainstream, but also towards those who hate it. Embrace the balance. Embrace the mid. Become normie. <laughs> Jokes aside, to wrap this up, I actually really enjoy that Superman, or I guess this new Superman series, is a little bit more simple and wish fulfilling. Superman was always meant to represent this template, baseline, good-hearted hero. If you haven't watched it, I recommend so. Do it, or All-Star Batman might adopt you. <gasps> also, subscribe to my channel, leave a like, and share this video and all that kind of stuff, or All-Star Batman will come for you too. This is Detrimus, signing off.